The 2025 GPD Win 4 was a surprise for us at the end of last year, as we were expecting to see the GPD Win 5 announced. With the new AMD HX370 processor, the Win 4 sees its fourth iteration in this series. There are so many Win 4S out there that the idea of this video is precisely to see how they compare. So let's get to it. Generally speaking, here are its specifications. With an AMD Ryzen AI9 chip with 12 cores and 24 threads and 32 gigabytes of RAM memory, it is physically the same device as previous generations of Win 4 in terms of width, etc. The 6-inch screen looks as beautiful as ever. It slides up to reveal the keyboard. It has a white backlight that can be turned off if necessary. The keys on the keyboard are quite small. You won't be able to use it like a normal keyboard. It's more for typing with your thumb or finger. It's useful for writing briefly, such as emails, chats, web browsing, that sort of thing. On both sides of the console, we have two analog sticks, a D-pad, a fingerprint reader, game buttons, and an optical finger mouse. The left side has a micro SD card reader and a switch to switch between mouse mode and controller mode for the controls. The bottom has a USB Type-C port. Now let's take a closer look at the specifications of the Win 4 series to see what changes have been made to the processor. Then we'll look at some tests on battery life and other things. When running Cinebench in a loop at full brightness, 28 watts TDP, the battery lasted close to one hour. Of course, average use will be longer, around three to six hours, depending on demand. As always, we have some system benchmarks to see how it performs against other mobile gaming PCs with similar processors to the current GPD Win 4 review. We also show benchmark results from previous generations to see the performance differences with the current one and its HX370 CPU. Let's now look at the Passmark test which gives an overview of CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage performance. A maximum score of 8,229, a 40% increase in performance over the original 6,800 model, and a 10% increase over the 8,840 generation. On to the next one. PC Mark tests the daily use of software. From browsing the web to working with office documents and editing images, for example, here it has about an 18% increase over the 6800 model and about a 5% increase over the others. And in comparison with other HX370 models, we see scores around the average when compared with the GPD Duo, the GPD Pocket 4, and the Onex FY Compact Gaming PC. Cinebench tests CPU performance on a single core and on multiple cores. That's a big increase of 30% and 50% over the older model and 17 and 24% over the other model. Compared to the other models with the same chip, we see identical single core scores, as expected with the current GPD Win 4, and scores around the average for multi-core performance. Geekbench 6 also tests single-core and multi-core CPU performance. We saw an increase of 40% and 37% compared to the older model, and 17% and 10% compared to the other model. Compared to other gaming laptops with the same chip, we see single-core performance close to the highest, although this drops to the lowest for multi-core performance. Now, let's take a look at practical gaming performance. For the gaming benchmarks, we'll also look at the analysis in Full HD and HD with a variety of TDP settings to compare the performance differences in the Win 4 series as well as with other HX365 and HX370 gaming notebook PCs of the current generation, such as the Onyx FY Pro. AMD processors have always performed very well in Forza, and the trend continues with the HX370. In Full HD resolution, we saw a 33% increase in performance over the old model and around 15% over the previous one. And this continues as a pattern, in a way. Overall, we've seen good increases in performance between processor generations in this analysis of the GPD Win 4 
25. If you have the 6800U gaming laptop, there is a big increase in performance with the 370HX in the current GPD Win 40. Compared to the 7 and 8 series processors, we didn't see such a big increase in gaming performance, somewhere between 5% and 15% in the three benchmarks we used, although you can see more in others. Compared to the other HX307 models, we see competitive results. At higher resolutions and TDPs, the current GPD Win 4 seems to perform better than the F1 Pro with the same chip. And at lower resolutions and TDPs, the F1 Pro seems to have the performance advantage. With a few adjustments between CPU and GPU power, you can get similar results, depending on where you want the performance. We know from Generation 8840U and other reviews that the emulation performance is impressive. We'll briefly touch on emulation performance in our analysis of GPD Win 4 2025. Well, as far as general emulation performance is concerned, you'll have no problem running games compatible up to the PlayStation 3 era on this GPD. And for most systems prior to that, you can increase the rendering resolutions, add graphics filters, among other things, to improve the visuals. Moving on to discontinued emulators such as Ryujinx and Yuzu, you'll see some performance increases over the previous generation. The original games still aren't all perfect, but there are plenty of less demanding titles that run very well. And, for the Vita 3K, we've seen very good performance in compatible games. In many games, you can double the rendering resolution and adjust the graphics to improve the visuals. Audio technologies have been improved so far. And don't forget that the GPD Win 4 2025 has an OCU Link port that can be connected to an eGPU, such as the GPD G1 or the Onex Player eGPU docking station, for even more graphics performance. It's time to sum up our thoughts on the GPD Win 4 2025 analysis. Although the GPD Win 4 2025 isn't the next compact gaming PC we were expecting from GPD, it is a welcome addition to the series as an annual refresh. If you have the original 6800U model, it's worth considering the performance increases as you get a big boost in gaming performance, allowing more modern titles to be playable or run at higher graphic settings or lower TDPs. So that's it folks, what do you think of this device? Is it worth the price? Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and see you in the next video.